Our climate is heating rapidly. Floods, droughts, heat waves, extreme storms and wildfires are going from bad to worse, breaking records with ever alarming frequency. Heat waves in Europe, colossal floods in Pakistan, prolonged and severe droughts in China, the Horn of Africa, and the United States. There is nothing natural about the new scale of these disasters. They are the price of humanity's fossil fuel addiction. The number of weather, climate, and water-related disasters has increased by a factor of five over the past 50 years. Daily losses total more than 200 million US dollars. This year's United in Science report shows climate impacts heading into uncharted territories of destruction. Yet, each year, we double down on this fossil fuel addiction even as the symptoms get rapidly worse, even as we know the cure. Our leaders pledged in the Paris Agreement to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees and build climate resilience. This year's United in Science report shows that we are way off track. Climate action is stalling on key fronts and the poorest countries and people are being hardest hit. But no country is immune the report is a shameful reminder that resilience building is the neglected half of the climate equation. It is a scandal that developed countries have failed to take adaptation seriously and shrugged off their commitments to help the developing world. The Glasgow decision urges developed countries to collectively provide 40 billion US dollars a year in new adaptation finance. And this must be delivered in full as a starting point. But it is clearly not enough. Adaptation finance needs are set to grow at, to at least 300 billion US dollars a year by 2030. I've just returned from Pakistan, where I saw firsthand the massive scale of need there. At the very least, 50% of all climate finance must go to adaptation. This is a moral imperative, and this is also a matter of common sense. Adaptation investments pay huge human dividends for donors and vulnerable countries, people and communities alike. And yet, most multilateral development banks are not doing enough. G20 countries are their shareholders. The buck stops with them to force the changes needed. It is also clear that early warnings save lives. And that is why I've announced that the United Nations will work to make them available to every person on Earth within five years. The World Meteorological Organization will take the lead. Many developing countries still lack these essential services. We also need a renewable energy revolution to drastically cut carbon emissions. All countries must boost their national climate ambition every year until we are on track. The G20, which is responsible for 80% of global emissions, must lead the way. There must be no new coal plants built, with coal phased out by 2030 for OECD countries and by 2040 for all others. The current fossil fuel free for all must end now. It is a recipe for permanent climate chaos and suffering. Today, I urge leaders to heed the facts of this alarming report. We must unite behind the science. We must turn pledges into action now.